lecture series based on model syllabus approved by University Grant Commission. This lecture series is also available on Government of India website www.sakshat.ac.in. In this part, we present audio, video, and text of the lecture with reprints and glossaries. Now, we listen to the lecture of Professor Devasya M. Antoni, Department of Philosophy, Hindu College, Delhi University. Today, I thought of speaking to you about one subtopic of the course module uh, which we teach in BA Honours Philosophy first year in University of Delhi. And uh, uh, the course uh, is titled as Elements of Indian Philosophy. That is the paper number two of what would be honors in philosophy. And uh, this course has got about 10 modules. And the module number nine is an introduction into the philosophy of Adi Shankara. I mean, I suppose uh, every person in our country knows, at least by name, this, uh, this, this great Acharya. Uh, he, he belonged to 8th century AD, 788 to 820 AD, that is a conjectural date because you know our people do not believe much on historical date, data, they have a different sense of making sense of what happens in the world. So, he is of that uh, century and uh, he is what you credited to have, you know within 30 years of his life, he seems to have achieved voluminous work on Indian philosophy and uh, especially his basic three works. Brahma Sutra Bhashya, then the Gita Bhashya and also his commentaries on the 12 or 10 principal Upanishads. Just yes, lived 30 years, imagine. I mean, I, I, as I suppose, uh, Indian philosophical thing is this, what is important is not the quantity of life, but the quality of life. I might live for one year, someone live for 100 years, but I think the, the quality of life is more important. So, that is another matter. So, the course I teach is this, you know, uh, so there I take the one subtopic. So, the one sub subtopic in our syllabus uh, is nature of Brahman, nature of Brahman. Now, uh, if, uh, if, you, if you say this, yeah, nature of Brahman, yeah. I would, uh, I would uh, use a but synonym for this word Brahman because if somebody hears the word, they will think it is all Sanskrit and all that. No, I think we should use a philosophical word maybe, reality. Yeah, reality. The Upanishadic word would be what you call Satyam, Satya. Yeah. Yeah. Now. So, this is the one subtopic, you know. What do you mean by reality? Yeah, okay. Now, Adi Shankara begins by this, by this question, you know, asking, what do you mean by reality? Now, this is a metaphysical topic. If you know in philosophy, we have metaphysics, we have logic, we have ethics, etc. Metaphysics means uh, inquiry into reality. Inquiry, that is very good. Inquiry. Inquiry. Yeah. Inquiring means you ask question. For example, I ask, who am I basically? Am I this body or am I my hand, my head or am I only this body? What is this table? Who are you? Suppose I am sitting here, he is sitting there. Uh, well, is he uh, like me or is he different from me? So, we ask such kind of questions, you know. So, the basic question would be inquiry into what is reality. And that is what I call, I think the, the, the beautiful word in the Upanishadic tradition is Sat, Satyam, that which is. That which is. Very important. So, we are asking question about isness of things. Isness. Now, I, I just touch the question. Suppose, is, is this table, what we see here, this table or this pen, is it reality? I mean, so, uh, if, if it is real, even if I break it, it should be a pen. Suppose I, I break this pen or it is burned, it is not this pen, isn't it? No? 
becomes ash or some other thing. So, they say the pen is not real. You see the point? If the pen were to be real, even if I burn it, even if you know it is it is uh, but it called crushed by something, it should remain as a fountain or a marker pen. It is no more. So, we ask the question, is the pen, it is reality. But at the same time, I see it. I am using it. I am, I am using the pen to write the write these words on the blackboard or this whiteboard. Sorry, I am used to blackboards. Okay. So, this is the idea behind it. So, the idea would be, what is reality? It is a basic, basic question. In fact, we ask the question in our life, what is Sat Kya Hai? What is reality? We normally ask when we face death in people's lives. I mean, if you, if you remember two weeks ago, there was, a, there was a big air crash in Mangalore. Imagine people touched down the airport, the pilot made a mistake in having that, uh, you know, touched down limit. The, the plane overshot the runway, went into the valley, Mangalore. Now, you see, so people ask the question, why did this happen? That is a metaphysical question. All right. Imagine people reached from Saudi Arabia to Mangalore, their own hometown, almost touched the runway, then you are out in the cliff. So, that is a philosophical question. Means, you cannot get the answer by, you know, maybe the pilot made a mistake. They say that, if you read Times of India, the pilot wanted to avoid what is called hard landing, because he wanted a soft landing. Therefore, he had a floating kind of experience of the plane and you know, then of course, it, 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 it went beyond the touchdown limit on the runway. Therefore, it, it, it went into the cliff. Fine. That is one explanation. Fine. So, when we ask such kind of questions, we are asking questions about what you call reality. Alright. Now, Shankara, Adi Shankara, the great Acharya of our tradition, I, 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 I somehow am fascinated by his philosophy. Not by the way people have understood him in our tradition. Because some people say the world is mythia. No, no. I do not think we can say the world is mythia. He does not say that. He is asking us the question, is the table real? Are you real? Is the aeroplane real? Now, but very, very important to ask this question. What does he mean by the reality? Or suppose he asks the question, what do you mean by when you say something is real? Now, that is the the second most uh, uh, important idea. What do you mean by reality or what do you call the criteria, the criterion of reality? In which context or by what standard you say X is real or Y is real? This is important. I already told you, uh, well, if I break this marker pen, it is no more a pen. I, if I burn it, it is not a pen, it becomes ash. Therefore, it is no more a marker pen. That means, for some people, this marker pen is not reality. Okay, it is only for some time. If, suppose I die, you know, we die, uh, dead body. Uh, even if, suppose I am married and my woman, you know, my best uh, loved person in the world, even she is, oh, dead body. <laughs> All right, they are afraid of that. Adhishankara says that. If, mo if my body would be real, they would, they would say, no, welcome. All right. So, the whole problem comes there. What is, what, is, what, you, what is the criteria you apply to say that X is real, the table is real, body is real, or mind is real, marker pen is real. Now, Adhishankara, in his work, I am just summarizing, he says, something can be real if it is non contradictable. These are tough philosophical words, I understand, you know, or non-sublatable. These are other word, you know, non-sublatable. So, the criteria would be this. What is that? Non-sublatable. Yeah. Or non-contradictable. They say in Sanskrit, kala abhaditvam. Abhaditvam. Yeah. Abhaditvam. A, ba, bhi, tvam. Yeah. So, he says, now this is the criteria Al Shangra uses to say whether X is real or not, Y is real or not, table is real or not, am I real or not, he would apply this criteria. If something is badhitva, it is not real. 
If something is abhaditva, it is real. This is what he says. Now, what does he mean by this? By saying that X is non-sublatable or what you call another word would be non-contradictable. Non-contradictable. What is he saying? That it cannot be cancelled or destroyed at any point of time. If the marker pen is really non-contradictable or non-sublatable or abhaditva, it should be marker pen if, even if it is burnt. Even if it is uh, cut into pieces, it should be marker pen, but it is not. We all know that. The moment ink gets over, it is no more a marker pen. Don't even destroy it. That means I had supplied the ink into this, the black ink. Fine. So, that means it is marker pen only for some time. Some time. My body is same way. I was born, I am like this body. I got a beautiful body from my parents. Fine, thank God. And I am in Delhi. Fine. So, but, but the point is this. There is also a time when I am not a teacher of philosophy. All right. What happens? Suppose I die. What happens to my teaching? So, he says, what, what I am doing now is also is contradictable. Therefore, my vocation, my teaching also is not what you call uh, uncontradictable. So, this is what he says. Therefore, he says, body or experiences in life, all right, they are not ultimately real because they can be cancelled. They can be subtracted. Now, somebody could object to this. There are people also who object. I am not saying that uh, whatever he says is accurate philosophy. But uh, the, the beauty of our Indian mind is that we have, we have got varieties of philosophic understanding. We were trying to understand the criterion given by Adi Shankara to describe what is reality. Satya kya hai? Aur usko parakhne ke liye hamara maaf dand kya hai? That is that's what he is saying. So, he is saying that वही चीज सत्य है जो हमेशा बरकरार रहे। I mean it continues all through past, present and future। यदि I told you that you know suppose I break this marker pen and it remains as marker pen, it is real। suppose it is not, it is not real। it is real only for some time। so this is what he uses त्रिकाल Abhaditvam. This is, this is, this is uh, from his commentary on Brahma Sutra. If something is real, ask, ask this question. Is this non-sublatable or not? If it is cancelable or not? If it is cancelable, therefore he would say, my body is not real. Why? My body, when it is dead, it is cremated or buried. Well, therefore, my body is not real. That doesn't mean I am not real. Yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't infer from that. My body ages when I was young, now I am middle aged, I get old, then I die, that does not mean I am, I am what you call, you know, sublatable or what you call contradictable, no. So, uh, that is another question, alright. So, this is very important, you know, what does the criteria, the criteria uh, or the criterion of reality for, for Shankara, what does it involve, non-sublatable. Non-sublatability, abhaditvam, very important, and this is this is what he applies to self. So that is self which is non-sublatable. That is reality which is satyam, which is always is there. Isness, that which is. So philosophically, if you say, if you ask the question, yeah, if you ask the if you ask the ask the question, what is reality? You say that which is, that which is, yeah. This would be the definition of, of reality. Then, therefore, he says, suppose I ask the question, what is, is it real? Apply that criteria to this criterion. It is not. Therefore, it is not reality. Now, uh, there could be a problem. Shankara is not saying that body is not completely unreal. No. I think this is a mistaken notion of Adi Shankara. When people say the world is mythia, I think it's not true. What he is saying is this: if there is only this reality, then how do I explain marker, pen, table, world, you and me? 
I mean my body. All right. He says, to understand that, he brings in the relation between effect and cause. I suppose those who do science, they will also explain this. Whatever, now this is an effect. Effect, marker pen, the company, Luxor maybe, I don't know, or the Parker company makes this. All right, all right. And it's, it is but made of some matter. So, you have efficient cause. Now, if I say this, this is stable, well, the material cause is the plywood or the wood of this, the material cause. The efficient cause of this is the carpenter or the company which makes it, the carpenter who comes and chisels the wood and all that, okay. The formal cause is the shape of it, you know, oval shape of this table, it looks nice, very artistic, fine, yeah. Now, so, all these are different causes, but therefore, this table is the effect. Karya. All right. Now, what is the karana of this? For Shankara, he would say, the primal cause is the material cause. Very important. That is, he would say, the primal cause of this table is not the carpenter the, or the company which made it. No, that is the carpenter who, who chisels the wood and all that. No, he would say, it is the wood. 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 Wood is the what you call the primal, the main cause of this table. Okay, that I think even science would uh, uh, accept that. Therefore, they say, no, what you call matter is indestructible. Matter. What is matter basic? It is energy. Energy. Now, this table is maybe when I see it, it is, it is, it is something solid. But if I scientifically examine it, it is energy. It is not solid as it is. Atoms, you know, it's, they are completely play of all these. And they, they are that. so, what I see as something solid with my naked eyes, it is not. It is not. You go to a science lab, they look quite differently. Right. And now we have what you call the principle of about quantum physics. Okay. So, that is another matter. So, this effect, which is a stable, he would say, what is its main cause? Wood. So, now, what do you call, Shankara would say, we should philosophically analyze what is the relation between effect and the cause. What is the relation between effect and the cause? Now, this is an important philosophical theory in Indian philosophical systems. Now, we begin with effect. Now, I am, you know, I suppose, now, my parents gave me birth. All right. So, I, I see my parents as my biological cause. All right. Okay. Cause. All right. This table is a material, you know, effect. It, it comes from the wood, but the carpenter, fine, is uh, efficient cause. Wood is the primal cause. Very important. Now, how does one relate effect, the karya to the cause, karana? This is very important. All right. All important philosophical theories begin here. How do you relate cause with effect or effect with the, because we, we begin from effect. It's called in philosophy a posteriori. We begin with effect. How do you relate this table with wood? Now Shankara brings a very revolutionary idea. He says the effect and the cause are not different. Ananya. We call it Sanskrit Ananyatva. Ananya means different, Ananya. Oh, some girls take beautiful names, Ananya, isn't it? But they have no idea what does it mean. Yeah, Ananya means what? Ye kariya, karana, ye dono, anya nahi hai. They are not different. They are not different. The table that you see right now is not different from what? From what? Wood. Wood. Wood is the primal cause. I told you that. So, the table as you see now, it is non-different from wood. That is called ananyatva. That is the effect. Effect is not different from the cause. Alright. This is a revolutionary idea which brings in... Uh, which Now, this whole this discussion is called in, in philosophy Satkaryavada. Satkaryavada. This, because, you know, see the problem is this, if you touch the tree's leaf, you will go to the branch, 
then you'll got the whole tree, then the trunk, then the roots. So you cannot, uh, you know, suppose I, I go to ENT specialist, you know, uh, but then there's a problem with the medicine. They teach, they only study my eyes, nose, throat. What about my heart, my liver, my legs, you know, my body. Therefore, I think the whole idea of Ayurveda is important. They study the whole body. Therefore, here we study the whole thing. And the idea is this, if effect and cause are related through the category of Ananyatva, Ananyatva, the idea, the ness of non-differentness, you see, non-difference between effect and the cause. So, he is saying that basically, if you destroy the table, it will become the wood. I mean, that is idea is that. Alright, of course, you, you say analogously because of matter. Alright, that is what he is saying. Now, this theory is based on what I call in Indian philosophy, Satkarya Vada. This is one of the most logical ways of understanding in philosophy. See, here they don't bring in God or anything. They simply ask you to exercise your mind, intellect, inquiry. You know, a philosopher is not afraid of asking logical questions. Also metaphysical questions. Right. Okay. I, I, I give an example. See, I am an unmarried person because I, I have already married philosophy. Alright. Okay. So, so somebody asked me, you know, you should get married because, you know, you will get, you know, suffering in life, you can share your life with somebody. I said, I told that person, you see, if you analyze our normal life, how many stages of life are there? I mean, our consciousness, our life. Now, what is this state called? You are sitting there, you are my student, I am your teacher, you know, so what is this called now? This state. Waking state, no? I am, I suppose, you are all awake now, isn't it, no? You are attending to me and you are listening to me. It's called waking state of consciousness. We will come to that. Consciousness, life. Now, at night, what do you do? Normally, not in Delhi, because they are awake at night. Normally, at night, what do you do? You go to bed, isn't it, no? You go to bed. When you are asleep, what is happening to you? What is the first phase of sleep? I suppose you got sleep, no? Couple of nights out there. You got sleep. Yeah. Then what is the first stage of your sleep? Yeah. Dreams, no? Yeah, you see dreams. Now in dreams, what happens to you? Can I teach you in your dreams? You tell me. Oh, I am sure tomorrow you will dream. That they will say standing here and you are sitting there and you are teaching. When you oh, when you get up, oh, it is only dream. I can teach you in dreams. People fall in love in dreams. Don't you know that? Ah, yes, he says. So, you see? Yes, very good. Suppose you are going to school or college, you are you are late to get up. You think you are already up. You brush the teeth, you have breakfast, toast, something, yeah, butter, then you get into the bus, and then you attend the class. When you get up, oh, I am still on my bed. You see? So, in dreams also, we see things. We see reality. What is the difference there in dream state and the waking state? What is the difference? Tell me. Apply mind. The, I think the most fundamental freedom of human being is what? To think for oneself. To think for oneself. Yeah, I think that's our most fundamental human right to think for oneself, right? So, in waking state, what happens? The world, my thing is outside my mind. And as in dream, what happens? It is imagination. Very good, very good. Yeah, right. I give you B honors degree now itself. Fine. Yeah. So, in dream, what happens? The world is within my mind. Yeah, you can even go by fly to US. All right, you can become a film actor like Shah Rukh Khan, all in dream, right? I could be king, fine. Yeah. So, in dream, the same world becomes what you call internal. All right, okay? All right. Now, when you dream, what happens to the state of the objects? 
Is it real? Are dreams not real? Are you sure? How? Tell me. Because many a times we dream that we'll become actor and all that. Fine. But in reality we are not that. In reality, fine. See, you see philosophical word. I think you are a budding philosopher. Now the problem is this, while dreaming, is it true? Is it real? While dreaming. Oh, suppose imagine I am sleeping, I am, I am having a dream, alright, okay, I believe one thief has come entered my apartment, he unlocked my Godrej lock, famous lock, they, all, they know that, you know, he comes into my room, then you see, it is a, it is a lot of books in my room, you know, I have only a small bed and all books everywhere, then he says, oh, what, then he opens my cupboard, he takes my rupees, my money, then he comes to my bed and you know, he almost pulling my leg, put me out. Then what happens in the dream? I cry out, no? Why, I, why do I cry out the, in, in the dream? If dreams are not real, why do I cry for help? Ask me, tell me. Why? Why? See, philosophy is dangerous. Philosophy is dangerous. It makes us to think. Why in dream, if, if she said it is not real, why do I cry out, Amma, Appa, please come. Oh, my brother, please come. A thief is catching me. Isn't it? Why? Why? Because at that time you are totally lost in our dreams. Totally lost. Fine. Fine. Okay. Okay. You are calling out for help because you really feel that the thief is catching you. Suppose I, I know in dreaming, uh, the, the thief is coming and catching my leg. I know, yeah, it's a dream. I will simply sit and smile there, isn't it? No. While dreaming, dreams are real. When you get up, you realize. So, when I, when, when I shout for help, my ma mama comes from home. Oh, get up, kuch nahi hai. Oh, it's, it was only dream. When I get up, I realize it was only dream. Yeah, dreams are real. You want to know dreams are real? Ask the question in the dream. When you see your dreams, then you ask the question, is your dream true or wrong? Is it real? Or is it real? Or imagination? So, when you say that the, the dreams are imagination, it is a, an evaluation not while dreaming. When you are awake. You got the point? Yeah. Got, so, got it. Got it. Yeah, you know, this is an important idea. Now, what is the other state of consciousness? So, we said we are awake, we dream, all are our realities, alright? The third state, according to Manduka Upanishadsi, is this, deep sleep. Sushupti, beautiful word, Sushupti. Sopnandam, what is Jagrita? Then you have Sopna, then you have Sushupti, deep sleep. What is meaning? Do you ever experience deep sleep in your life? My dear, you are here because you every day experience deep sleep. But the problem is this, in deep sleep, you don't know that you are in deep sleep. That's the reason. Yeah. What does that mean? In deep sleep, there is neither this I, nor this world outside, nor this world inside. And that is the most important thing in our life. Deep sleep gives you that joy. That is why if you go to a hospital, suppose you are having 104 degrees Celsius fever, you are, what do, the, what do the doctors do? They give you some tablets called compost to make you sleep. But what is a sign of good health? You have good sleep. Ananyatva non-different. Yeah. Effect, this is important. Effect and cause. Ananyatva. Ananyatva. Yeah, this is important. So, if the effect and the cause are not really different, though they are different, as a, see, now, see, it's a very important idea. Now, this is based on, I said, the Indian philosophical theory about 
cause and effect. And there are two theories or two aspects of theory. What is the basic philosophical question? Does the effect pre-exist in the cause or not? This is a basic question, philosophical question all schools would ask. Okay? Does, does the effect, effect pre-exist in its cause? Yeah, this is the philosophical question or a metaphysical question. Or to put otherwise, does this oval table pre-exist in the wood or not? Do I, this body, there was this body, you know, does this, you know, what it pre-exist before my coming into this form in my parents or not? That's a biological question, all right? Okay, I'll give you an example of that. Now, there are two schools or two theories on this. Those who say, now the answer could be yes and no. Some would say, yeah, the effect does exist before in the cause. Some say no. Now, those who say yes, yes, the effect karya does exist in the cause before it came to be, that is called sat karya vada. This, I, I understand, you know, Sanskrit is a beautiful language. I am not a Sanskritist, but I can understand Sanskrit. Now, sat karya, sat means existing. Karya effect. Those who say that the effect, the table here now, pre exist in the cause, wood, they are called Satkarya Vadins. Satkarya Vada. Yeah. Those who say no, see, our Indian philosophical theories are so different. I would not say, I mean, uh, if, you, if you study Western philosophy, big philosophy, there are also very many schools, but people say that, you know, even Westerners who have done Indian philosophy, our philosophical traditions have got such a variety of understanding. Such a, I mean, you, you look at, uh, if, if you do philosophy, that's why, that's the beauty also of our Indian understanding of civilization. Alright? Okay. You know that a Brahman in Kashmir eats sheep meat. Whereas a Brahman Namudri fellow in my native state, he won't even touch, you know, fish and meat. Alright. Bengali Brahmins, they love machi. What do you call that fish? Without fish, a Bengali will not have food at all. Whereas I am staying with a Jaina family, they, but you leave alone fish and meat, they won't even touch garlic and onions. You see the variety of our understanding of our Indian philosophical situation. That is possible because of this. We have philosophically varieties of views. But I told you they are ananya. Yeah. In the Mudri in Kerala who doesn't eat maybe fish and meat. When he eats a Bengali Brahmin who eats fish. He will say fine, fantastic. How are you? Namaskaram. Namaste he would say that. Fine. Manakam. Fine. Whatever he says. Yeah. Why? Because though you are different from me, we are basically non-different. This is a beautiful idea. Therefore, the other is not different from me. That is a beautiful idea, Indian philosophical idea. Otherwise, you are a threat. You know, I speak Punjabi, maybe Malayalam or Tamil or you know, oh, what is that? Okay, right? So, this is the idea of Indian civilization. That is why we... Uh, Assami would speak Assamese. Still, we are Indians. Idea is this: because though you are different from me, you are not different from me in philosophical sense. Ananyatva. This is Adi Shankara's philosophical contribution, and that is, I think, should be the bedrock of our Indian civilization, nation building. Okay, that is another social interpretation of this. Okay, fine. So, Satkaryavada would mean that the effect pre-exist in the cause. Now, there is also a school called Nyaya philosophy, the famous logical school from coming from Bengal. They would say, no, effect is new, effect is not in the cause. It is called Asat. Asat Karyavada. Yeah. You see the beauty of our Indian philosophical imagination, varieties, conflicting positions. It is like Sata Swara, Sapta Swara. I mean, I mean, you, you, if only we had a saw, you can't make a music, isn't it? No? The flute you see, or the tampura, or the sitar, you know, it is, it's, 
right varieties variety so this is idea behind it now i have no time to go into this now satkarya vada since the adi shankara comes here satkarya vada has got again two versions indian philosophy never sleeps it's always what you call making new forms yeah now according to satkarya vada i said the effect the karya already exists in the cause the table this table was already in the wood of course now it is there it's a new form of it as process it all right okay right it is like the dancer and the dance when the dancer goes to stage now there will be a time if you notice in the dance you know okay you cannot distinguish between for example uh, you know that famous dancer in you know, anywhere you take you know the dance and the dancer okay when he is not dancing or she is not dancing you can say oh the dancer is so and so but when you are into that there comes a kind of ananyatva between the dancer and the dance you cannot distinguish you cannot distinguish this is called laya laya not pralaya what we normally have is pralaya not laya okay this is what is called laya yeah you cannot distinguish okay yeah okay the, the idea behind it so but, but i was saying so satkarya vada so it, it has two versions now the effect pre exists in the cause fine all right okay yeah then when the cause becomes this effect becomes this effect is this becoming real or not you see how our people imagined now the old school of our philosophy is called sankhya they would say no when this table becomes table from the wood that is real that means the wood undergoes real change yeah so to to now do what to sum up this is actually i am not uh, taught anything i just touched something all right to sum up this would be the basic idea of what is what is what is called what is brahman what is reality no but of course he he goes through many philosophical attempts of that so the we began with the idea what is reality and the word brahman denotes this idea of metaphysical uh, what is reality in indian philosophical tradition and adi shankara but but he develops this idea and uh, he 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 says he says that the basic notion of brahman is an objectless reality the example i told you I, of course I, i understand it is not fully explainable within uh, 40 or 35 minutes or 50 minutes I, the example would be the deep sleep experience of who you are that's why that's why the dreams can be sometimes what frightening but deep sleep no deep sleep is always ananda i could be hungry i could be poor i could be crippled but in deep sleep you are i know so joyful all right yeah so this is idea behind it all right but the danger is that you reduce this reality into one particular form this body this particular profession etc that is that i think the sociological danger of this idea which i think we have committed to, to some extent so uh, for uh, for adi shankara nature of brahman would mean nature of ultimate reality how does one understand this, this reality and the idea would be ananyatva non different nature of this okay this by itself is formless what is the basic form i am but this i is not this i this is a philosophical i the spiritual i the spiritual i that's why so i think this is is an important insight into how one of our philosophers have inquired into the philosophy of non dualism advaita thank you so much yeah if you have any questions any questions anything to i know it is too too too, too short it's like uh, you know <laughs> you 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 show something you know but within a split second you cannot understand yeah it takes time it 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 it, it needs tapas not the physical mental philosophical you know yeah god you need you need to be concentrated 
All right. Yeah. So it, it takes, you know, years of labor to understand. But I suppose you have made some sense of it. This is the introduction to uh, the first topic of the ninth model of that course, nature of Brahman. So, Brahman, Atman are nothing but the term for what is reality. Reality. This one. This lecture today was an introductory one on topic, okay, one of module 9 of what you call paper 2 of B. Honors Philosophy Course, University of Delhi. Is the, the, as, we, as I told in the beginning, it is, uh, it is uh, called Elements of Indian Philosophy and today we had an, what do you call, you know, an introduction to introduction. Yeah, to what is this nature of uh, reality according to Adi Shankara. Yeah, as I say, you may not love Adi Shankara, you may love Adi Shankara, but you cannot be indifferent to him. Because he leaves you unchanged. Because, he, you know, he, he, his, his philosophy is, you know, so logical. So logical and so conceptual. But we, we, but we need to reinterpret. Reinterpret his philosophy in the context of our country where people are, you know, most of the marginalized, poor, you know, kind of stuff. We need to reinterpret and make sense of what he's saying. And I think he has a deep uh, significance for asking the question, what is reality? Who am I basically? Who am I? What is this? Uh, that's a philosophical question. And he is a philosopher par excellence. Thank you so much for your patient listening. It was a pleasure for me to be with all of you. And thanks for the questions. Thank you. Bye.